if you're looking for the real help, babybar.online. Hello, everybody, and welcome to FYLSE Real Help to Pass the Baby Bar. This is the BP Learned Hand. I uh, know it's been a while since we talked, but I figured everybody wanted a nice, quiet holiday. So now that we are in the new year, welcome 2018, and let's get back to it. So what I wanted to cover with everyone today is how you take those rule statements and how you apply those rule statements and the elements within those rule statements to create your essays. So if you'll see up on the screen, what I have here is I have a fact pattern. It's a very small fact pattern. Um, it's almost like a, a micro essay, if you will. It's not even a mini, it's a micro. Um, it says, discuss knitting Nancy's liability for battery. So the call basically tells us that we are limited to discussing battery, right? And that's good because, once again, this is a micro analysis. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to, you know, we don't really have the issue spot because we know what we're being told. We're being told battery. So let's take our rule statement for battery. So the volitional act with requisite intent, which causes a harmful or offensive touching, right? So within our rule statement, right, we have the volitional act, we have our requisite intent, we have causation, and then we have this harmful or offensive touching. Now, these are our elements within our rule statement, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to want to map out our essay. So we're going to have volitional act, right? Requisite intent. Our harmful or offensive touching. Let's pop back up here and put causation. Okay, so these are our elements. If you're given a fact pattern and you have to write an essay, and you're basically given, for instance, on the October um, 2017 FYLSE, there was a tort fact pattern that was given, and there wasn't a lot in it. I think there were maybe three torts, and you had to write an entire essay on three torts. Well, when you get something like that, that basically means tell me everything you know about that tort. And if you don't structure your essay in a fashion that it clearly shows that you know not only this is the rule statement, but these are the elements within the rule statement. And then I understand the rule statements within the elements. Then you're going to miss out big on points. So here for volitional act, we know that a volitional act has to be voluntary. It can't be accidental. It can't be due to a seizure. Um, it has to be volitional. So we're going to put voluntary muscle movement here, right? Because we know that it has to just be a voluntary muscle movement. For our requisite intent, we're going to go ahead and put down our rule statement for requisite intent. They must intend the action to bring about a harmful result or there must be substantial certainty that the harm will occur, right? Once we have those down, we're going to move on to causation. As you can see, what we're doing here is we're just putting down what we know. We haven't read the fact pattern yet. We don't know where the analysis goes, but what we're doing is we're filling in what we do know. So now let's put in our causation, the defendant's Voluntary action must be the direct or indirect legal cause of the harmful or offensive contact. And then harmful or offensive. I always like the fact that it's harmful or offensive contact. For the harmful or offensive touching element, it just must be reasonably or it must be understood by a reasonable person. So, for instance, you know, if it's if an ordinary person would not take a pat on the back as harmful or offensive, then it's not considered harmful or offensive just because somebody takes, you know, personal dislike to it. 
So once we have it laid out in this manner where we clearly, we have our battery, we have our rule statement for battery, we have our volitional act, requisite intent, causation, then our harmful or offensive touching. What we wanna do at this point is we wanna insert our analysis, right? So we're gonna go ahead, this is where your analysis will go. So we know that we're supposed to write in our first year of law school in an IRAC formula, that issue, rule, analysis, conclusion. And with once we've got our, you know, we've read our call, we know what theory we're in, we're in battery, luckily, you know, they've really narrowed it down for us. Then we take battery, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna create this in an issue, rule, analysis, conclusion type fashion, right? You should do something along the lines of whether knitting Nancy is liable for battery, right? Um, if knitting Nancy is liable for battery, and there's your issue, and then here, what you can see is this rule statement is our rule, and then here we're gonna have our analysis on each of these issues and then our conclusion, right? So what we wanna do is, because the elements within this rule statement are sub-issues, we want to make sure that we have them as issues because they're sub issues. So here for volitional act, you want to do something along the lines of whether knitting Nancy's movements were a volitional act, right? And we're going to put that and we'll make it a question, right? So there we go. Now we have that in an issue. Then we're going to put our rule statement, right? Issue, rule, analysis, and then conclusion. So we have our issue, we have our rule, we have our analysis, and what we're going to want to do here is we're going to write our conclusion here. Was there a... Was this voluntary? Here, with requisite intent, it's the same thing. We just want to make this our issue, whether knitting Nancy acted with the requisite intent. Remember, you always want to make them a question, because that's the issue we're trying to answer. We have our issue, we have our rule, we have our analysis, and then right here, we're just going to want to put our conclusion. We're going to do the same here with causation. And then we have our rule, our analysis, and we're gonna make a conclusion on this issue. And then we're gonna do the same thing for this harmful or offensive touching. Now we have it as a question. There's our issue, there's our rule, there's our analysis, and now we're gonna put our conclusion. And then here's our overall conclusion as knitting Nancy is liable for battery. Remember, you don't wanna say guilty because here we're working in torts, so you wanna say they're liable for. And this is how you will use your IRAC, and you're gonna use your rule statements, and you're gonna use your elements to clearly break down and discuss the issues in your fact pattern. If anybody has any questions, any concerns, you guys have anything you wanna see specifically, let me know, um, and we'll cover that the next time we meet. Other than that, it was nice to talk to everybody. I hope you guys all had a great break, and I will talk to you guys later. This has been the PP Learned Hand with FYLSE Real Help to Pass the Baby Bar. See you guys later.